I traveled alone for about 10,000 miles around the United States, um, uh, inspired originally by the fact that I was living in Columbus, Ohio, which is the kind of place that ins makes you think about long distance travel. And uh, I was working very hard to support a lifestyle I didn't much like in a city I didn't much like, and was freelancing, writing, and doing consulting, and a little bit of trade journal work, and technical articles, and covering conferences, and you know, that whole thing, a little online searching. And uh, I found myself um, working at every, every available moment, every available ounce of energy to pay for a lifestyle in Midwest suburbia. And it suddenly dawned on me that since I didn't like what I was working so hard to pay for, that I really ought to come up with something else. So I made a list of all my passions. And they were things like uh, travel and adventure, and romance and bizarre encounters, computer networking, ham radio, tinkering, gizmology, bicycles, you know, neat stuff in general. So I, obvious choice, I sold my house and moved to a bicycle and put a computer on it, powered it by the sun, lived in the computer networks and became a nomadic freelance writer. This is the trip so far, starting in Columbus, Ohio, and most of the East Coast and all across the South and through Texas and meandered around Colorado for a while looking for low passes and uh, <laughs> I had to do seven of them before I found one. And I have a profound new respect for gravity with a 275 pound bicycle um, and then of course the whole west coast. So um, I guess basically I should tell you what this is all for. I want it all but I don't have any money to pay for it therefore I have to work while I travel. Um, and during the first trip, I carried a laptop computer, uh, an HP Portable Plus, uh, well, originally a little Model 100, then a Portable Plus, and uh, had a small solar panel that charges batteries and lived in the computer networks. Problem was, I couldn't use it while I was pedaling. And one day in West Texas, I was pedaling along hour after hour. Not much was changing. You know, occasional variations in the sagebrush density and things like that. But um, I started noticing that uh, as every day, stories and wonderful bits of text were writing themselves in my head and just sort of floating off like vapors and such into the air. And I'd promised myself that I'd sit down at the end of the day and write, but I never would. And since my normal work mode as a freelancer is the same on a bicycle as it was in suburbia, which is PFD, um, procrastination followed by despair. Uh, I, I realized that the reason I wasn't getting anything done and making any money was that I couldn't work while pedaling. So I started thinking about a handlebar keyboard and visualized this little LCD that would come up out of the console, out of the front of the bike and so on. Well, one thing led to another and it turned into this. Now there's four buttons on each side of the handlebar, so I type in binary now. It feels very much like playing the flute, which actually is part of the inspiration for it. And on that, without any software help, I can do about 35 words a minute, just raw text. And I'm just now adding some software that, that can, has about eight, up to about 8,000 RAM resident macros. So every group of keystrokes, when delimited by space or something, then is replaced by you know, whatever the phrase that's attached to is. And in this machine here, there are five micros, well, no, four in here, plus a laptop. Uh, there's an old Model 100 with a quarter meg of RAM disk and a 68HC11 that runs the bike and does all the real-time stuff and a couple of Z80s, one for packet data comm and one for text-to-speech. So that's the version that's been on the road now for about three years, and it's the version that's now being retired. Uh, it's, as, I don't know if you can't see the front panel very well from over there, but there's lots of switches, and it's architecturally inflexible. Every time I want to change something, it takes a soldering iron instead of a text editor. Uh, there's a security system that beeps me with a pocket beeper if anyone touches it. Uh, it can also say things with its synthesizer, and uh, oh, you heard it talk a minute ago when I did the boot. And also it has a little siren, which, uh, sorry. Uh, I have that on the handlebar switch also because it sweeps into the ultrasonic and dogs really hate it. Um, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the level one response. The level two response is the kickstand dog whacker. Uh, which <laughs> and speaking of noise, every bicycle needs a horn, so there's, there's one of those. That's what the air bottle on the other side is for, which I guess you can't see there. But, um, Let's see, what else? Um, there's two meter ham radio on there as well as a packet TNC so I can do ham radio networking. And I've got a gateway running in Richmond, Virginia that links that into the network so I can take anything from packet and tie it into UUCP or Genie or whatever, uh, again, while mobile. The only, again, it's ham radio so it's limited to business traffic or non-business traffic. And finally, the whole mess is powered by solar panels. There's a 10 watt panel here and another one up front and that charges batteries which run everything except the wheels. And as a conversation in the hall a moment ago yielded, uh, the wheels are actually solar powered too because I'm part of the food chain, but um, <laughs> you come up with a lot of snappy answers when you live on something like this. You get a lot of questions like, one of my favorites is, oh, is that front wheel small so you're always going downhill? 
<laughs> so anyway, um, that's kind of a quick overview of the current system. Oh yeah, it's 54-speed derailleur manual transmission there from 16 to 144 inches on a 275-pound bicycle with a quarter-horsepower engine. That turns out to be pretty useful, uh, especially the low end. The, uh, the power-to-weight ratio is about the same as a three-horsepower lawnmower engine pushing a three-ton mini motorhome, just to kind of put it in perspective. 